in a world full of food, insane merit-based income, and governments that don't kill you for disagreeing with them. Monkey Jones, that's me, and my two best friends try to do the impossible. Create a guide to help you survive communism. Monkey's Declassified Communism Survival Guide. Your results may vary. If you turn on the news, you might be wondering if you woke up in the year 1940. Because there are Nazis and communists running amok. This sudden rise in communism is due in part to the popularity of Democratic candidate Comrade Sanders. And this ideology is growing in popularity so quickly that full-scale communism is right around the corner. But there are a lot of misconceptions in the public sphere about what communism really is. So when a communist dictator, I mean leader, rises up, most people aren't going to know how to avoid getting murdered by their new government. But don't worry though, that's why I'm here! To teach you the tips and tricks that will help you survive communism. Chapter 1 Equality As any true communist will tell you, the fundamental principle of communism is equality, where social classes don't exist and all people are equal. This is true, as all citizens living under communism will be equally dirt fucking poor, and we'll get to spend an equal amount of time standing in bread lines. That brings us to communism tip number one. Stop being hungry. Now's as good a time as any to prepare your body for malnutrition and starvation. I would recommend starting off with three slices of bread per day and working your way down from there. But as every 14 year old girl who rejected me in middle school will tell you, living your day to day life famished is pretty easy. The hard part is not dying of boredom while standing in the breadline for three hours a day. That's why I recommend initiating small talk with your fellow comrades in order to make the wait time fly on by. Oh boy, I sure do love standing in line all day instead of working. Me too! I'm not even hungry! My daughter died of malnutrition last night and we ate her! We've been eating like kings! This is communism, my friend! We all eat like kings! And in case you're skeptical about the connection between famine and communism, all you've got to do is ask anybody who lived in a grain-producing area of the Soviet Union in the year 1932. Oh wait, you can't! Because they all died of famine! <laughs> The communist government's forced collectivization of agriculture led to the deaths of 6 million people. That brings us to communism tip number 9. Acquire a taste for human flesh. There might not be any grain available for lowly peasants like you, but there sure will be a lot of dead bodies. Humans taste really good. I once ate out Jane Goodall and it tasted like microwaved wet dog food. Communism History Lesson! Communism is based in the principles of Karl Marx and his book, The Communist Manifesto. The philosophies of Marxism were in the effort of accomplishing two main goals. The elimination of social classes, thus making all citizens financially equal, and the elimination of the government in order to prevent corruption. So naturally, when dictators established communist governments in order to oppress and control their people, they seem to forget about that second part. Which is where communism tip number two comes in. Don't think about it. If you think about communist governments for even five seconds, you'll realize they directly contradict everything that Marxism was all about and that the principles and philosophies you idealize in your mind are all lies put in place so that a government can control you. So just don't think about it. It's easy. Put that extra brain power to work thinking about more important things, like obeying the government and having no aspirations. But wait, if Marxism is all about everybody being equal, then how come all of the people are poor and the government is rich? Stop thinking about it, you stupid bitch! As a woman, you get three years paid maternity leave. So what do you have to complain about? You're right. 
Getting paid almost nothing rather than just nothing definitely makes up for living under a totalitarian, one-party government that literally murders detractors and protesters. Now somebody pass me my nanobite of bread, I'm hungry. Chapter 2. How to Avoid Being Murdered by Your Government if you thought starvation was going to be your main concern when it comes to not dying, then you've got another thing coming. A communist nation has a one-party political system. And if you oppose that system, then they're gonna fucking kill you! And in case you're skeptical about the connection between being murdered and communism, all you've got to do is ask any of the 1.5 million people who opposed the communist revolution in the year 1918. Oh wait, you can't, because they were all murdered. No wait, please. I'm sorry I was skeptical about communism earlier. I just didn't like the idea of my country being taken over by a corrupt dictatorship. Please don't. If you don't want to share Alexa's fate, then just follow communism tip number three. Don't have opinions. In the wonderful world of communism where everybody is treated equally, your government will literally kill you for having the wrong opinion. It's no wonder why so many social justice warriors are communist. Killing people for having the wrong opinions are the only way they can win an argument. That's right, Junkie. Not only will communist governments kill you for speaking against them, but they'll make it like you never existed. Joseph Stalin would edit people out of pictures after they confessed to anti-Soviet activity. If you thought getting banned from a YouTube comment section was bad, this guy literally got banned from existence. Wow, he banned people for disagreeing with him? Joseph Stalin would have been a great YouTuber. He was also severely depressed and hated all of humanity. He would have fit in perfectly with the YouTube community. Chapter 3. Excuses, 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 and how to make them. The most important principle for modern day communists isn't equality or independence from the government. It's excuses. If 90% of your day is spent standing in a bread line, the other 10% is spent making excuses about why communism isn't that bad. If somebody criticizes communism and points out the philosophical contradictions, the millions of lives lost due to its implementation, or the numerous examples of instantaneous corruption, all you have to do is copy and paste the same few excuses that communists have been using for decades. For example, True communism has never been tried. This is the best way to completely shut down discussion by disregarding any valid criticisms as fake communism. Listen, I get that 99.9% .9 of communist governments lead to corruption, famine, concentration camps, and genocide. But the unachievable fantasy version of communism that I have in my mind has never been tried yet. Another great tool for your excuses arsenal is whataboutism. Whenever somebody criticizes communism, all you have to do is point the finger elsewhere and say, But what about capitalism? What about the United States? What about, uh, uh, uh... All you have to do is convince yourself that other systems having flaws automatically makes up for the flaws of your own. And you'll be able to argue your way around any communist critics. And even if these excuses don't work, you can always murder the guy and erase him from history. Well, comrades, by using these nifty hints and tricks, hopefully you'll be able to survive when communism comes knocking on your door to steal all of your valuables so that they can be distributed equally among your nation's government officials. I'll see you at the breadlines! Oh fuck, it's the end of the video! I want to thank my friend Asperger for helping me out with this video and also for making some original music that I had playing. I've got a link to his channel down in the description. I highly recommend that you go check out his music. Also, you see these names on the screen. Those are my patrons. If you want to see your name on the big monkey YouTube screen, go check out my Patreon page. You just gotta throw in two bucks. 
You throw in two bucks, you can put any name you want on this list, and they will forever be associated with monkey videos. You don't even have to do your name. You want to prank a friend? You want to you want to prank your pastor at church? You want to prank your mom? Just <laughs> throw in two bucks, pick a name, and there you go. It's going to be in the video. It's easy. Go check out the Patreon page in the description.